Hello, I'm Marcus Hong, and I'm the author of the foundational essay for the practice of prayer for the Follow Me curriculum. And I'm also the assistant professor of practical theology, director of field education, and chapel worship coordinator at Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. One of the reasons that I really wanted to write about prayer is that in my daily work, I am regularly planning with a group of people, chapel services for our seminary community, as well as spiritual retreats and exercises for people. I also really love writing liturgy and I've written for the Connections Worship Companion for Westminster John Knox Press. For the fourth aspect of the practice of prayer in this curriculum, I really wanted to address the fact that prayer is not just about words. In our Reformed tradition, in the Presbyterian Church at least, we often focus on words, Jesus Christ as the Word of God. In fact, prayer is more than just words. Prayer is emotion. Prayer is embodiment. Prayer accesses the fullness of our humanity. The liturgical theologian Donald Saliers talks about prayer as being at full stretch in our humanity. I think we can actually best see this through the life of Jesus, which is why I chose Psalm 22 as the scripture passage to go along with this aspect of the practice. You see, Psalm 22 is the psalm that Jesus quotes, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That prayer goes on to describe one's bones feeling out of joint, your flesh feeling like wax melting, being out of breath and dry in your mouth. It's a very evocative description. You can tell that the psalmist was really not only feeling emotionally raw, but that their body was involved in what they were feeling and what they were praying to God. That's true not only about situations of lament, but also situations of joy. Have you ever been so excited that your heart begins fluttering or your palms get sweaty or you feel like jumping and moving and dancing? When we express ourselves to God in prayer, we're expressing not only words that we want to say, but also our emotions and our very embodiment which should also lead us to consider that not everybody feels the same way we do and not everybody moves or embodies themselves in the same way we do. So when we engage in the practice of prayer, we really need to consider how might we be able to invite everybody with a variety of emotions and a variety of embodiments into our prayer. If in our communal worship, we forget to ever lament, then those who are grieving may not feel welcome, may not feel that they have a voice in our worship. If in our communal prayer, there are people with varying embodiments who feel that they cannot participate, then are we hindering their ability to pray? So I encourage us to think of creative and inventive ways to pray. Some people pray in color, not with words at all. They may write the name of someone they love and then just draw and paint freely over that. Some people pray while walking in nature. Some people pray with icons, other people don't. Some people pray with incense, other people are allergic to incense. There are a lot of different ways to pray. And I encourage each one of us to both root and ground ourselves in prayer practices that seem familiar so that we have a steady and regular diet of prayer and also to be adventurous. Prayer is like a great forest, a great wilderness of joy and delight into which we can enter. Try something new. Branch out, not only root yourself, but stretch and grow and reach out each of your limbs to try something different.